Hi guys, it's your faculty Ranganathan Espen Kondala back again with a new series of uh, video uh, covering uh, some of the important current affairs for your prelims 2023. Now, see, in prelims, not only do events become very important when you're studying, the personalities also become extremely important topic or subject in your current affairs. Different personalities, individuals who have contributed extensively to India's national struggle. Now, over the period of time, we've, 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 we've been, we've seen, we, we must have heard about a lot of personalities in the current affairs and we will be covering that aspect as well in this series of videos. And today's personality I'm going to talk to you about is Begum Hazrat Mahal. She was very popular for her role in 1857 revolt. She was actually the wife of... Um, Nabab Saab, Nabab Wajid Ali Shah. See, many know about her as a passing of friends only. Nabab Wajid Ali Shah and um, Birkis Khadri and how she actually fought against um, the British annexation of Abad etc. But most tend to forget the contributions of this lady after. Now what happened after? What was her individual role in our national struggle? In recently completed Azadi Kamrit Mahatsa, the government actually dedicated an entire document for her, remembering Begum Hazrat Mahal for her contributions. Hazrat Mahal was actually the mother queen and uh, in, rea in reality a very strong symbol of resistance and revolt in 1857. She was very important power. She was one of the very few women who challenged the British in 1857. I mean, she took the responsibility of the revolt. Her maiden name, her original name is Muhammadi Khanum. She was actually born in Faizabad, Avad. Later, she performed a muta marriage with Nawab Shah, Nawab Wajid Ali Shah. Now, in fact, Wajid Ali Shah used to have something called the House of Fairies. The last Nawab of Awadh used to have a House of um, Fairies, which was basically an institution to train young and beautiful girls to become professional singers and dancers or recruit for his experiments in theatre. I mean, see, Wajid Ali Shah was a great contributor of performing arts and a Kathak dance, Ras Leela, the uh, UP theatre, street theatre in Sabime. Wajid Ali Shah Sahib was extensively contributing and he created a house of fairies where he could train young women in the Nawab was a great pattern of arts, turned Awadh literally into a center of art, literature, music and theatre and uh, where even all the courtesans dancers were refined and respected back then. I mean, uh, I mean the courtesans, the dancers of Nawab's Darbar were actually respected, not undermined and Muhammad Hadi Khanum, Muhammad Hadi Khanum was re-Christian. Mahat Pari and the Parikhana or the House of Fairies is also called the Parikhana. She was called Mahat Pari and claimed the ranks to become one of the Nawab's Muta wives or you can say temporary wife under a contract. So that's what Muta marriage basically means. Muta Niga is basically a sort of marriage alliance of a temporary marriage. Okay. Now, she belonged to the Parikhana, the House of Fairies. So, she must be very well trained in dance, art, theatre. It was an alliance that enjoyed legitimacy under the Shia variant of Islamic marriages. So, muta marriages or contract marriages were very popular in the Shia sect. The Nawab had many muta wives or you can say temporary concubines. And any of these women who would give him a son was always given the title Begum. And that's how she became Begum because she... Um, Parik uh, um, Muhammadi Hanu eventually had a son, Milkes Kadri, and in turn were also given Mahal in his palace. And these would then become official wives. Once they had a son and they got an official house or a Mahal, they become wife. That's how she became wife, and that's why she's called Begham Hazrat Mahal. So she was actually a temporary wife, but because she gave a son, Bilkis Kadri, she came to be known as the favorite official younger queens of Nawab. It was a time and she became Begum Hazrat Mahal. There are many different accounts of uh, the Abad state of this period. And um, to be honest, guys, Hazrat Mahal was not really very popular in the royal household. No, morely because 
she had not entered into a marriage through the royal connections in fact she was not related to any of those nobles or darbaris or you know this elite of up she was rather coming from a very humble normal background in fact she was in reality a nautikia a dancer she was envied by other officials other queens the many other wives official wives they hated them they 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 were jealous of them jealous of her and she they were always fascinated by her and you know, there were good people who were also fascinated by her talent by all accounts she never actually injured the trust of queen mother i mean uh, nawab sahib's mother but was often treated less kindly but she was the most loved by nawab sahib wajid ali shah sahib so life in avadh after annexation became very difficult nawab sahib had to leave avadh after his kingdom was annexed by east india company and nawab's kingdom was annexed under doctrine of mal administration so dalhousie could not actually implement doctrine of laws because nawab had a son by himself so that's why dalhousie annexed the kingdom in the name of mal administration saying that nawab was not actually ruling the kingdom appropriately as per the terms and forced to leave lucknow on the 13th of march 1856 he escaped to calcutta and nawab assumed residence in calcutta you know there is a famous legend you know avadi biryani avadi biryani mein aloo dalne wale nawab hi the because when he was in calcutta finances were weak so it is said that it was actually nawab wajid ali shah sahab who actually introduced potato into biryani in order to obviously save cost besides the nawab also assumed that calcutta was a temporary house he i mean nawab sahab had plans to visit victoria with an official complaint mainly to regain his lost territory because previously such a thing had been done satara had got its power back after uh, victoria intervened after the british parliament intervened satara did get its power back so nawab wanted to do the same and nawab's mother queen mother queen janabe alia um, played a very important supportive role in the move in fact queen mother nawab's mother even went to england met met victoria mainly to persuade uh, victoria to give back power to wajid ali shah sahab she died in i mean queen uh, nawab wajid ali shah's mother died on the way back to paris so eventually in avad begum hazrat mahal her son bilkis kad birgis kadri and wajid ali shah's other wives and muta wives were left out in avad because see nawab sahab was in calcutta nawab's ladies and family muta wives son birgis kadri hazrat mahal and other muta wives and other wives were left out in avad and waha queen mother died in paris so things started to get very chaotic and in this chaos hazrat mahal took the responsibility of consolidating the everything into a single aspect at the same time the sepoys were very angry in up bihar because of the enfield bullet casings the the enfield bullets were introduced where uh, the, the bullet cartridges were actually coated with sort of animal fat which most probably included cow and pig fat okay now the sepoys were specifically against the this issue on top there were numerous um, when begum hazrat mahal was in avadh there were numerous other nawabs across india from bitur in uh, maharashtra to nana sahib of bitur to aras jagd jagdishpur kumar singh ara the many people who had been victims of doctrine of lands at an excuse britishers used to annex kingdoms and um, at the same time mangal pandey also came into the picture on the 8th of april 1857 he triggered or you can say started the barakpur mutiny the first mutiny so avadh was annexed nawab sahab was in calcutta hazrat mahal uh, nawab's mother died in paris hazrat mahal the wives etc were still in avadh at that time the revolt started so hazrat mahal took the aspect showed her strength showed her talent and people of avadh were actually very furious that their ruler had been deposed 
and Hazrat Mahal was young. She was one of the youngest of the queens. So she stood up to the challenge. Uh, at the same time in 1857, there were numerous attacks on British camps, but there was also lack of coherence and uh, confusion among the leaders in Abad. The local Jagirdar, the policemen had even joined the revolt, but they needed a central authority to rally around. And they did. While Wajid Ali Shah was away, rebels began to look towards Birgis Khadri, but Birgis Khadri, Awad Nawab's son, was very young. He was only 12 years old. That is why Begum took the responsibility. Begum Hazrat Mahal became the regent, queen regent. She actually led the revolt from the front. She planned everything, strategic planning, the administration during the crucial period. She even went to the war front. And in a big surprise, after all women who were always behind the parda, she was a very capable administrator and war strategist. And Begum proved her mettle as a leader for the rebellious sepoys of Lucknow and Abad. She united Hindus and Muslims. At the time, when Nawab Sahib nahi the, she stood to the challenge and gave leadership. Hindus and Muslims against the British. She motivated women to become warriors, joined the war, even broke the chains of Parda system, which was prevalent in Awadh in those days and appealed all sections of society to donate funds and donate their effort for the war. She united and coordinated all the three military fronts, cavalry, artillery and infantry. Her commander was a Hindu leader called Raja Jailal Singh. Her confident or very close advisor was Mamu Khan, superintendent in charge and women units were led by an able commander called Uda Devi, a Dalit woman. See. She created three groups, the woman under uh, woman leadership, Mamu Khan and Raja Jalal Singh. She did not let Awad go into chaos. She gave leadership to Awad when Nawab Sahib was not in Awad. Uda Devi played an exemplary role as a sniper and has a memorial in her place in, even today. And uh, she is well known in Awad, Uda Devi. According to one of the uh, British officers of that period, who wrote many books. She played very important. Uda Devi did enter the city but could only help in evacuating the residents. I mean, uh, the Lucknow siege for the British started on the 30th of May, lasted till 27th of November 1857. In fact, the thing is, it seems Britishers never anticipated Begum Hazrat Mahal and that to a, Hing, a Muslim woman, young mother of the royal family who was always secluded in, in the Parda to take up the metal and give leadership to the sepoys. Henry Lawrence eventually lost life to a grievous injury in the 4th of July 1857 and even today is buried in the Vilaknav residency. Hazrat Mahal proved to be very proactive. In the entire war period, she issued proclamations regularly encouraging people to unite and fight against the British, not to give up. In fact, the Begum was so determined to evict the British from her soil and records literally say that she attacked General James Ottram, who had been summoned to reinforce the army. She played a major role in this period. And uh, his soldiers who had been stationed at Alambagh Place nine times, Palace nine times. I mean, Hazrat Mahal leadership was so outstanding that eventually James Ottram and people also wrote in glorious words about her. According to Lucknow historian Rosie Lelwyn Jones, who had extensively researched on Begum, uh, Begum rejected Outram's offer of a peace treaty with Queen Victoria and a promise of pension of 1 lakh rupees. She made, I mean, instead of doing a peace treaty, she continuously demanded for her troops to rebel against the British. She wanted to re establish the old Awad state. And Begum Saiba even rode on an elephant along with her soldiers with, in one of the attacks, literally leading from the front. See, for one of a Muslim woman, that too from a royal family who has always been in the Parda, this is huge. Very rarely such exemplary um, heroism has been ever shown, warriorship has been shown by women. All our efforts went in vain when King Jang Bahadur of Nepal 
agreed to send Gurkha troops to help British. I mean, unfortunately, she was cheated by one of her own old allies. Her supporters ran out of patience and they also betrayed her by shifting sides. Khazarbag Palace was lost, but not before Hazrat Mahal escaped to Musabag, a country house outside Lucknow. She finally escaped to Nepal, where she even joined Nana Sahib. Nana Sahib was running a campaign in Nepal. Even in Nepal, even after the revolt was suppressed, she did not lose hope. In response to Queen Victoria's uh, proclamation, Queen's proclamation of 1858, promising better governance and uh, right to religious uh, freedoms of all native princes, Hazrat Mahal even sent a rebuttal to the Queen. Hazrat Begum died in exile in 1879. She is actually buried in an unmarked grave at uh, very close to Jama Masjid in Kathmandu. In fact, she she helped build a masjid in Kathmandu in Nepal while she was, and even today it is called the Hindustani Masjid. Her country lived with her. I mean, Lucknow always lived with her. She continued to follow all the developments back home, wrote poetry, and involved herself in noble causes. She always, I mean, even multiple times, it's kaha jata. She was given multiple offers to return back to India with all power. She refused to return to India on British terms. Her son Birjas Khadri, however, did return to Mithya Burj in Calcutta, where uh, after the death of Nawab Sahib Bajid Ali Shah in 1887, he died under tragic and mysterious circumstances, attending a dinner along with his son Kurshid. Luckily, his uh, pregnant wife Mahatab Ara survived, and uh, eventually the Nawab's family survived due to fear of consequences of a legal heirship. Uh, Mahata Ara also sort of disappeared into oblivion. It was much later that Bijis Kadri's son Meher Kadar returned to claim that he was the legitimate heir. Uh, Hazrat Mahal's great uh, grandson, a descendant, even today lives in Calcutta, Kaukab Kadar. And uh, Begum Hazrat Mahal has all but become a footnote in Indian history. Today, we don't even sort of remember this lady. Another well, historian, Arti, he says, Hazrat Mahal's legacy is diminished in the change in landscape of post independent India. See, we love our Jhansi Lakshmi Bai and we remember the heroisms of Lakshmi Bai. Hazrat Mahal was no less. Her humble beginnings as a courtesan, as a nautiki, as a dancer made her an inadequate role model for the people. I mean, in fact, Jansi Lakshmi Bai comes from a royal family. So, you know, she's sort of popular. Hazrat Mahal not. Even today, in Lucknow, she's remembered as a passing reference to Nawab Sahib, but never really as her independent. These women of India were sophisticated women, well-versed in arts of dance, music and poetry, the Nautikyas. The dance girls, the notch girls of Victorian era, but their association with the courts actually made them wealthy. 19th century British records even indicate that they were some of the highest taxpayers before 1857. Hazrat Mahal remains an important aspect, effective from today in every video. We will be seeing one current affairs topic, but we'll definitely be seeing one of the women personalities who are who did impact Indian history the most. Do follow me on an academy, subscribe to an academy with the code of uh, RKIAS Life. You can get flat 20% discount before 17th of March. Subscribe now, you'll get direct access to India's best educators, one on one mentorship, and the best part is you can actually get optional NGS subscription together at one of the best prices across the country. Simultaneously, this Sunday, 11 a.m., do attend the UPSC CSE combat, a maximum all India level combat prelims test series consisting of 50 questions. Do attend that. You will get an all India ranking and you will precisely get to know exactly where you stand and what you need to do to improve your preparation. That's it in this video, guys. Let us meet tomorrow. My name is Ranganathan Espen Kondala and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.